All right, ready to dive into something uh, pretty controversial. Always. Okay, good. Because today we're tackling this idea of abolishing the U.S. Department of Education, mm. which some Republican candidates are pushing. Yeah. You know, it's interesting because this isn't just like a campaign talking point this time. There's actually yeah. like a whole detailed plan to actually like dismantle it. And we're talking about Project 2025. Yeah, exactly. That's the this one. blueprint for a potential future Republican administration. Right. They really seem serious about this. Yeah, it seems so. And it's interesting because like we were looking at this Washington Post article. Yeah. And there are some candidates who are really taking a hard line. Oh, yeah, for sure. Like Eric Havde. Mm hmm straight up calls the Department of Education a monstrosity. Wow, yeah. Strong words. It is. And Tim Sheehy. Yeah. He's suggesting we just throw it in the trash can. Oh, wow. So, like, there's some real passion here. Yeah, you can definitely feel it. Clearly some strong opinions on this. Definitely. And, you know, this this whole debate, it goes way back. Oh, for sure. I mean, in 1979, like, when the department was first created under President Carter. Oh, wow, yeah. It's always been kind of a point of contention, mm. especially with conservatives like Ronald Reagan even tried to dismantle it back in the day. Oh, yeah. And even Trump, you know, cut the department's budget pretty significantly. Yeah, yeah for sure. So, so it's it's been brewing for a while. Yeah. This this is not new at all. No. It's interesting, too, because it's not just history, like we were saying. Yeah. This debate is happening right now. Uh-huh. Like we were looking at a Pew Research Center survey. Right. And it shows there's like a huge e partisan divide. Oh, huge. 64% of Democrats Okay. have a favorable view of the education department. Right. But only 26% of Republicans. Wow. That is a big difference. Right. That's a big gap. Yeah, no kidding. Shows you how divided people are on that. Exactly. It's a clear sign of just like how different the ideologies are on this. But let's like break it down. What are the actual like core arguments here? Yeah. Let's get into it. Why do people actually want to abolish the Department of Education? Okay, let's start with the pro-abolition side. Okay. What are their main points? So one of the biggest things they bring up is this idea of bureaucracy. Okay. That the department is just too much bureaucracy, unnecessary federal overreach. Mm. They think education should be handled, like, way more locally. Okay. At the state and local level, you know. Closer to the people. Exactly. Closer to students, closer to communities. Yeah, makes sense. It's more streamlined, you know. Okay. And then you have proponents like Bernie Moreno. Uh -huh. He's a Republican Senate candidate in Ohio. Right. And he's arguing that this would make decision-making so much better, yeah. more flexible, you know, more tailored to the local needs. So it's about less red tape and more local control. Exactly. Okay, that yeah. makes sense. But what about the other side? What are the arguments against getting rid of the Department of Education. Well, a lot of people who are against abolishing it are really concerned about equity and civil rights. Okay. They talk about the department's role in enforcing these really important federal laws. Well, like, like Like Title IX. Okay. You know, the one that prohibits sex-based discrimination in education. Right. And then there's the Individuals with Disabilities Education Act. Uh -huh. That one makes sure that students with disabilities are getting the education they deserve. Yeah. A free and appropriate education. Exactly. And they're worried that without the department, those protections could just like disappear. That's a big concern. It is. And we're seeing this play out right now with all the debates about transgender rights in schools. Right. Oh, yeah, absolutely. That's a huge one. Huge. The way the Department of Education interprets Title IX right. to include protections for transgender students, yeah. that has caused a lot of backlash Oh yeah, from some conservatives. They're not happy. Not happy at all. They see it as the federal government overreaching, pushing this like woke agenda, as they call it. Right. And speaking of that, the Washington Post article that we're looking at yeah. quotes Eric Hofde. Mm -hmm. And he's criticizing the department for promoting gender ideology and social engineering. Right. And this is where it gets really interesting okay. because it's not just about like administrative stuff anymore. Right. It's about these deep beliefs uh -huh. about the role of the federal government in shaping our culture. Yeah. Like what are we teaching our kids? Exactly. And how much say should the federal government have in that? So the stakes are high. Oh, yeah, definitely high stakes. But here's where it gets even more interesting. Okay. Even within the conservative world, there's disagreement on how to approach this. Oh, yeah, totally. There are some conservatives who are like, whoa, hold on a sec. Okay. Maybe getting rid of the department entirely is not the best move. Okay. So who are we talking about here? So there's Max Eden from the Manhattan Institute. Okay. He's saying that eliminating the department is, like, politically impossible. And strategically not that smart. 
So what's his solution then? He's got this idea he calls de-escalation through escalation. Okay, that sounds a little counterintuitive. Right. It's like fight fire with fire. Okay, I'm listening. He thinks conservatives should use the Department of Education okay. to push their own agenda. Interesting. Like really controversial policies that would make the department so unpopular uh -huh. that even Democrats would be like, okay, maybe this isn't working. Wow, that's a bold strategy. It is very bold. But it makes you wonder what would actually happen if the Department of Education just went away. Right, like what would be the real impact? On students, on teachers, on schools, like what would it actually look like? Yeah, that's the big question. A million dollar question. And honestly, it's a tough one. Yeah. It's a massive question, and there are no easy answers. No, not at all. And honestly, it's a question that, like, every voter needs to think about. Yeah, for real. Like, seriously consider, what kind of education system do we actually want? What should the role of the federal government be? Yeah. These aren't just, like, theoretical policy debates, you know? This right. has real consequences. Oh, yeah. For oh. students, for teachers, for communities, like, across the whole country. Absolutely. And... You know, while we've been talking about those extremes, yeah, like the people who are like super for or super against getting rid of the department, huh. there's some voices in the middle too. Oh yeah, totally. Like Nick Bagich, yeah, Republican candidate in Alaska, right? He's an interesting case. Yeah, he is. He started out kind of aligned with the idea of like eliminating the department. Yeah, he even said that the federal government's role in education was dubious at best. Right, exactly. But lately, it seems like his stance has softened a bit. Yeah, it seems like he's moving more towards, like, reform uh -huh. instead of just wiping out the whole department. Right, like maybe he's realizing how complicated it would be. Yeah, or maybe he's worried about the backlash. Could be both. But it just shows that even within the Republican Party, there's a whole spectrum of opinions. Yeah. And it highlights the need for a more nuanced discussion. Right. Like, even if you're all about local control... You can't just ignore the federal role. In, like, making sure things are fair. Exactly. In ensuring equity and protecting the rights of students who are vulnerable. It's a tough balance, for sure. It is like walking a tightrope. So, for our listeners who are trying to wrap their heads around all this. Yeah. What are some key takeaways they should keep in mind? Well, I think the most important thing is to remember that this isn't just about administrative stuff right it's way deeper than that yeah it's political it's ideological exactly it's about fundamental beliefs about the role of government yeah the balance of power between federal and state authorities mm -hmm. and even like our social and cultural values it all ties in and it's important to remember this is not a new debate no not at all the department of education was created pretty recently all things considered yeah in 1979 and conservatives have been pushing back against it pretty much ever since yep Ronald Reagan campaigned on dismantling it. And while he wasn't successful, okay. his efforts did lead to some scaling back. Exactly. And of course, we already talked about how Trump tried to cut the department's budget. Yep. So this debate has deep roots. It does. And it's driven by this idea that education should be handled locally. Right. That's the core of it. But we can't forget about the arguments for a federal role. Right. Especially when it comes to things like equity and civil rights. Exactly. It's a complex issue with no easy answers. No, it's not. And in the end, it's a decision that voters will have to make. As we head into 2024. Exactly. And regardless of where you stand on the issue, yeah. it's clear that this debate will have a huge impact on education in the U.S. Absolutely. It's a call to action for everyone to be informed and engaged. Yeah. What we're talking about here has real consequences for real people. It's a chance for all of us to think about what we believe in when it comes to education. Do we want the federal government to be really involved ensuring equity setting standards? Right. Or do we want more local control, more autonomy? These are big questions. They are, and they're worth thinking about. Yeah. And remember, this isn't just about what happens if the department is abolished. Right. It's about how this debate shaping the conversation about education right now. You're right. The arguments, the priorities, yeah. they're all influencing policy. Exactly. Regardless of who wins the election. The educational landscape is constantly changing. It is. Staying informed is key. Absolutely. Okay, so as we're wrapping up this deep dive, yeah. I bet you're thinking, what does this all mean for me? Yeah, that's the big question. And honestly, the answer kind of depends on where you live. Yeah, that's because if the Department of Education were to actually be abolished, right. a lot of the responsibility for education would go back to the states. Okay, so like different states would handle things differently. Exactly. And what happens in your local school district? 
could look totally different depending on your state's priorities, you know, and their resources. That makes sense. So it wouldn't be a one size fits all situation. No, not at all. So how can our listeners prepare for these potential changes? Like what can they do? I think the first thing is to understand like what's going on in your own state. Yeah. Like what are your state's educational standards? How do they fund schools? Right. What are the big issues being debated locally? That's great advice. Knowledge is power, right? Exactly. But understanding the system, you can be ready to advocate for the changes you want, yeah. whether it's at the school board level or in the state legislature or even nationally. Absolutely. And remember, you're not alone in this. Right. There are tons of organizations, yeah. advocacy groups, people who care about education. Yeah. Connect with them. Learn from them. Make your voice heard. This deep dive has really shown that the future of education is something we all need to be involved in. Yeah. It's not just a political issue. It's personal. Yeah. It affects our kids, yeah. our communities, our whole country. Exactly well said. And this whole debate about the Department of Education, yeah. it's really a symptom of a bigger conversation okay. about what we value in education and how we make sure every student has a chance to succeed. And that's a conversation we need to have no matter what our political views are. Absolutely. This has been such an insightful deep dive. Yeah, it has. Thanks for joining us on this exploration of a really complex and important issue. Thanks for having me. Until next time, keep asking questions, stay engaged, and let's work together to build a better future for education.